My name is Jeremy Walton, and this is the Cinematography of Devotion. Let's go. I love listening to directors and cinematographers talk about their films. I think more people should watch their interviews or listen to a podcast because it's a wealth of knowledge. For this video and others like it, I try to find as much information as I can and condense it all down into one video. So if you don't have the time, watch this and maybe you'll find something interesting. There wasn't a whole lot of information for this film, but I want to cover the use of the red Komodo and how the filmmakers approach the look of the film that's based on a true story. The movie that we're talking about is the 2022 film Devotion, directed by J.D. Dillard and cinematography by Eric Messerschmidt. To start with, let's cover what cameras were used, and that's the Panavision DXL2. This features the Red Monstro sensor, and it's a camera you can't buy. You have to rent. It's been used on a lot of features, but I bring this camera up because of the camera they used alongside it, which is the Red Komodo. Yeah. This guy right here, paired up with the DXL2. And this camera is something you can buy and is a great price for what you get. So, what did they use it for? We were very early adopters of the Komodo and that camera was really attractive to us because it was so small. It was an incredible tool for us because we were able to put it on the wings, the landing gear, we built mounts to put it on the tail. We put that camera all over that aircraft. I want to focus on the cockpit for a second, and I do want to bring up Top Gun Maverick. I did a video on that film as well, where I cover a bunch of stuff, so go watch it if you're into how they shot that movie. For Maverick, they did use the Sony Rialto camera extension system. That was only shooting in 4K since the raw recorders couldn't fit in the cockpit. This was years ago now. They now have the Rialto too. But just to show the advancement of technology, just look up what the Komodo can do and it can all be done in such a small form factor which Devotion utilized. For the actual setup, thanks to Messerschmitt's Instagram account, we can see the mounting setups for inside the cockpit. This is what they used for the actual flying scenes where they wanted the real thing. There are a few different setups and I will get into that in a minute. The opening sequence where they're flying in the Bearcats was shot for real because the trainer aircraft was a good match for the Bearcat and since it was a two-seater they could put the pilot in the front and the actor in the back and there was room for the camera. For the outside of the plane we can see a number of camera setups using the red Komodo and I just love mounting cameras to anything that moves. If you were wondering about the camera mounts these look like the POV mounts. Here's their website and price for this system if you were looking to mount a Komodo to your airplane. You never know. Now, this wasn't done for the entire film. Capturing everything for real can't always happen for many reasons. The director had something to say about that. We would remove panels of the airplane, recreate them with rigs welded onto them, and then put them back on. But you can only put one of those on at a time while you're researching, because the pilot has to see how the camera affects the maneuverability. At a certain point, you've put too many things on the plane and the pilots go, I don't like this. There's also issues with actors that have to direct themselves, eye lines, screen direction, just to name a few. So they had to find an alternative to some of those issues. It's like the weather, the ceiling, the visibility conditions, and the reliability of the airplane all take precedence for obvious reasons, over the light and the sun position. So we shot plates and we did it on a volume. Before I show you that setup, I want to rewind the clock back to the original Top Gun and show you a few pics of that setup. They used a salvaged F-14 cockpit and rear screen projection for the background. They even had a 10K light on a ring to act like the sun. I bring this up because of something Messerschmitt said. Everyone is talking about the LED volume like it's this new idea. And it's like, no guys, it's like the same thing that Hitchcock was doing in the 50s. It's just the display is a different idea. Just wanted to throw that at you so you can see what Top Gun did. And now have a look at what Devotion was using. It looks pretty similar with a lot of upgrades. And it does look great in the final film. You can also see the DXL2 being used instead of the Komodo in this setup. I knew all this stuff going into the film. I thought, okay, I'm going to see if I can spot the difference. As soon as I started watching, all the technical stuff goes out the window, and I enjoyed the film, which I think is a compliment to the movie. Having said that, and for all the people who saw Devotion or asking about matching these cameras, I got some news for you. One thing Top Gun Maverick and Devotion have in common, besides actor Glenn Powell, is they use the same flight coordinator, Kevin LaRosa, and use the same plane-based camera system, which we know as the Cinejet, which captures some great shots in Maverick. So what does that mean when it comes to cameras? It was on Devotion for about four months, and we built a new system onto the Cinejet, which was a hard-mounted camera. It was a Sony Venice camera mounted just above the duckbill, which is right above the exhaust to the jet below the rudder. I also went over to IMDb to see what was listed, and we can see the DXL2, the Red Komodo, and here is the Sony Venice. I didn't know that going into the movie, but there was never a time I thought, 
Wait a minute, I think a Sony camera was used in some of these shots. That's why I really never worry about how a specific camera or lens will match another camera. There are differences, but the majority of people can't tell or don't care. I came across something Messerschmitt said a while back and it's really a great thought on choosing a camera. You have to pick the right tool for the film that you're doing, and every tool is going to have its own set of strengths and weaknesses. Exposure, dynamic range, color rendition, but also size, weight, availability. Those are all factors that go into the decision making process that you're going to do when you pick a camera. I'll link a video to a handful of reasons why I use my Komodo and Canon R3. And there are a lot of reasons why people use specific cameras besides how they'll match. Now, the filmmakers really try to do as much as they could in front of the camera and use the LED volume for obvious reasons. but what about the overall look of the film? There's a lot more to a film than what cameras are being used. The early color palette conversations were with Thomas, the production designer, and then Deirdre, the costume designer. It was a conversation that was coming from JD Dillard about how he wanted his movie to look. I just wanted to point out, creating a look goes way beyond your camera choice. I love the technical stuff, but that's only one part of the puzzle. They really try to stay away from the typical desaturated war movie look I'm sure we're all familiar with. So how was that done and how do you achieve that on set? Those choices were made primarily in what was in front of the camera in terms of the big choices. And then we made lighting choices and we had one LUT and it basically introduced a little bit of color in the shadows, coolness, and it took the highlights and the midtones a little yellow and a desaturated red. What I love there is the big choices being made were in front of the camera. You hear a lot, or at least I do, about doing things in post, but what I hear when listening to cinematographers like Messerschmitt, they try to capture as much as they can in camera. I talked about this in my video, Filters in Film, if you're interested, and I've actually done a lot of videos about filters because I do love using them. How a director wants to shoot a film is also important, especially for a cinematographer and lighting. This film in terms of camera work felt very intentional and the composition was very pleasing. You can tell there was a lot of thought that went into it. Messerschmitt talked about J.D. Dillard's style and their camera direction being predictable and the actors willing to work within the frame they gave them. Every shot we shot was intended to be used in the cut, and that was important to him. It was nice because it also meant we could light in a way it was quite rich. It has this kind of khaki undertone, and a lot of the guys, especially interiors, were lit with warm incandescence, and it's contrasty, but it's soft. Just like every film I cover, a lot of planning or pre-production is done, and choices are made. Cinematography can cover a lot of things, but I'm always limited on what is shared. I really enjoyed hearing about the use of the Komodo since I own one, and seeing the shots they were able to capture is truly inspiring, motivating. I think I need to buy an airplane. To-do list, buy airplane. When I started into filmmaking, the Sony F900 was a popular cinema camera and was in the ballpark of $100,000. There was no way I was going to be able to own one, and now we have a camera like the Red Komodo being used on a $90 million feature film and being used for all kinds of productions because of the image and price point. It really is incredible what filmmakers have access to, and if you haven't seen it yet, go watch Devotion and see for yourself. Well, there you have it, the cinematography of Devotion. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more in the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. Leave a comment if you saw the film. Until next time, it's a wrap.